Okay, wonderful. So this meditation, guided mindful eating meditation we'll do today and a talk first about healthy yogic diet. Um, it will be brief, but hopefully educational and inspirational. And for those of you here live online, it's great to have you here from Maryland and where else you're all from, Orange County, and I'm up here in Bay Area. So, and um, Stephanie says, you eat plant-based and thought this would be interesting. And you're from New York, which is where I'm from originally. And I actually grew up lifelong vegetarian in New York, long before there was Whole Foods and um, tons of plant-based meats. I, um, I'm 46 and my mom and dad shifted to being vegetarian because of the yogic diet for compassion and health and not killing living beings. Before I was born, my mom shifted. Um, so by the time she was pregnant with me, she stopped eating all meat, fish, and chicken. So I grew up, I've never actually to this day tried fish, meat, or chicken, or animals. And I know for sure you can be a thriving, healthy, and probably healthier um, human being with not having to kill animals to eat. And welcome Antonio here from Portugal and Leda from Los Angeles and Brian's here because you love plants and I do too, plant-based eating. So wonderful. So I'm going to, I just shared a little bit. I've never eaten meat or fish or chicken. We did grow up a lacto-ovo vegetarian. The yogic diet was generally vegetarian, but had dairy. But dairy, if you get educated on it, eating eggs kills baby male chicks, not um, what they show in the media. And then eating, drinking milk or cow's products or cheese actually indirectly or sometimes directly kills the baby animals and the cows and the mother animals and father animals. We, um, the way I grew up, I thought, well, eating eggs and um, cheese and milk weren't killing the animals. They were just taking the milk from the animals. But the more I learned about it, I've been about eight years mostly vegan, the dairy and the meat industry is completely connected. So a lot of yogis for yogic diet for nonviolence reasons, the Sanskrit word is ahimsa, A-H-I-M-S-A, um, went vegan as well, stopping the dairy. Dairy is scary is the hashtag I like online. So basically when, um, in, in, at least in America, about 99% of animals are raised for food. The animals raised for food in um, America, 99% of them are on factory farms in cruel, horrific conditions, fed non-natural foods and antibiotics, and that's all going into your body, not to mention the fear and the adrenaline in the animal when they're killed. So they're not running around free in a farm, even the cage-free animals you see advertised. It's not what it is advertised to be or appears to be. So when you, the day the male baby chicks are born, since they can't produce eggs, right? It's the mother, a female that produces eggs. They grind them up alive. It sounds gruesome and it is. And then the cows, same thing. When the day the baby sweet innocent cows are born, they take it away aggressively from the mother and both the mama cow and the baby cow is crying and it's cruel and horrific. Not to mention that the cows were forced to be pregnant um, with machines and then held in cages to nonstop to keep producing babies. And then the day they're born, they take the baby away so humans could drink their milk or milk products. That's the only reason the cows are making milk is because they had a baby. It is very bizarre why humans would drink cow's milk, but you wouldn't drink your dog's milk or cat's milk or have your dogs forcibly in a cage with machines hooked up to keep getting them impregnated. And then today the their puppies are born, pull the puppies away, and then you steal and sell and drink their milk. It's as, the cow's situation is as crazy as the dog and cats to do that. But society, culture, and most importantly, industry for profit makes it not only acceptable, but then they half lie or a lot of lies to tell you that you need it for nutrition. And they say you need it for calcium. Not only is it not true, now they're showing studies that it actually can deplete your calcium. So you're better to get calcium from plant-based and vegan substances. So there's so much to this on the cruelty level. So some of us want to sustain or continue to not eat animals and be vegetarian or vegan to reduce suffering, to not kill living beings, but to not also harm them. And those baby cows that then they take away from the mom if they're male, because they can't produce then milk as a lifelong slave basically to the animal industry until they're then killed um, for eventually those mama cows when they can't be pregnant anymore, often they're killed and that's meat. So that's why I say what I didn't know growing up and many don't know is the dairy industry is connected to the meat industry. It does cause suffering and killing and it's harmful to others. So for yoga, we want to 
feel union, harmony, connection, peace, love, right? And to do that, we don't want to kill other beings. Even if people always say, love animals, don't eat them. I say, you don't have to love them, but just don't kill them. Right? Keep them off the plate. If we stop supporting an industry that's cruel over time, not only will the health, our health improve and we can reduce heart disease risk and cancers and other diseases, but um, there will be less of a demand. So we can all do our part one meal a day. That's on the cruelty level. But for the last three years, I also was teaching stress management and yoga for a heart disease reversal program by Dr. Ornish as a stress management specialist where they actually proved that not only can you reverse Sorry, not only can you prevent heart disease, which of course is also blood pressure and diabetes issues with not eating animal products, but he even proved you can reverse it in conjunction with stress management, which we did yoga, which is what I taught and exercise and support groups. So there's benefits for the health, of course, for the animals and then for the earth. There's all these great documentaries out there now. Sea Spiracy is a new one for the fish industry. Um, sea spiracy is probably on Netflix. And then there's cow spiracy. And there's all these great documentaries. Um, that I'll type it in the chat box. And you can also go to Forks and Knives website for vegan recipes and Mercy for Animals. You can learn more about the suffering and how to help animals by keeping them off your plate. But these documentaries are also great to show how it's the best thing they say you can do for the earth and sustainability is to stop eating animals because then we're not supporting the industry that's taking up land and taking the water and the resources or from the humans that are, there's people, human beings starving on earth around, around the world. And we're taking those grains and sources and feeding it to animals and then killing the animals for food. It makes no sense, it's cruel. So the question here, and we're gonna do a meditation in a moment on this, the question is why do people eat animals? Family, society, profit, animal, agriculture, and the advertising supporting that has been telling you for years and telling people for years they need it for nutrition. I'm a living example at 46. I've never eaten meat, fish, or dairy in my life. All my blood works fine. I do take B12 because I'm not eating eggs as a vegan. So you do have to learn how to um, you know, eat healthfully and have proper nutrients in your diet, not just say I'm not gonna eat animals, you have to actually know what to eat to be healthy, right? You wanna be a healthy vegan or vegetarian, not just eat processed and sugars and vegan processed food or cookies. You gotta eat healthily, but if you eat plant-based, organic, whole foods, the yogic diet was whole grains, legumes, beans, tofu, vegetables, fruits, colorful, nutritious, you wanna make it appealing. And if you eat like that, um, and definitely, Jeanette, I agree with you. No one needs to eat animals for any reason. Not only do they not need to, I, it's cruel. And, it's, um, and here's the other point I wanna go into. If we're eating meat because we're taught you need it for nutrition, I want you to relearn that it's not true. If you look at the biggest animals in the world, the elephants, strongest and biggest, elephants, rhinos, gorillas, they're vegan. They're not even vegetarian, they're vegan. And gray sand, you're asked, what about wild caught fish? Probably better on the health, slightly better, maybe, maybe not for your um, health, but not necessarily because out in the oceans now, there's so much plastic and mercury and there's that toxic oil spill now with that fire in the ocean in Texas. The oceans are so polluted from human um, cause, but that's on the health level. But without the plastics and the mercury, you can get all the omegas you need from plant-based sources. I do put flaxseed in my smoothies and put it in oatmeal. I take one other supplement, vegan um, um, omega, from like an algae source a few times a week. But you can get all the omegas without um, the fish. But more importantly for me, when you say, what about wild caught fish? The fish has pain and feels pleasure and pain. The fish wants to live just like us. The fish has babies and family and they're intelligent fish feel pain so why would i want to put a hook in a fish's mouth and cause pain and then kill them the fish have a reason to be here just like us so for ethical i don't want to kill the living beings but for health i'd say these days um what even they say wild caught fish they say cage-free animals it doesn't mean it's healthier for you if you actually look into it even that like cage-free they say they might be 
millions or thousands of animals crammed into a building with no sunlight or windows, they put a one by one foot door that three chickens at a time can get out of and they call it cage free eggs. You gotta look into it. It's not always what it appears, but on the um, ethical level, I personally don't wanna cause harm or kill living beings. For the, my, and for my health, I could just go right to the plant-based source. Why eat the animal that gets the nutrition from the plant when you can go right for the plant, right? And you can, there's a great a documentary, Game Changers, to learn about plant-based athletes, how they've been thriving and doing better on a plant-based diet. So again, a lot of this is a myth about um, what we eat. So before we do our meditation, one more question, Michelle, thanks for asking. You say, what foods provide the highest lysine so much are arginine and nuts and grains that give you cold sores? Um, okay, I, well, I'm not a nutritionist. I don't know which products have lysine. That's a good question. I know you could take a lysine supplement. I also know that keeping your immune system up, I believe will be less likely for your cold sores to come out which plant-based diet can help increase the immune system, not dead animals and process. But I can't give you that answer. I'd have to look it up. Um, you can go to nutritionfacts.org. I'll write it in the chat box. New, what's new? Nutritionfacts.org is a wonderful site by a plant-based doctor, Dr. Michael Greger, who wrote How Not to Die book, which is great and I recommend it, or How Not to Diet book. Um, which is about the diet industry. And he goes through each vegetable and each condition for chronic illness and probably everything you need to know on there about the research behind it and can show you the benefits to plant-based without side effects. So I hope that helps. Stephanie, you have those books. And Michelle, for the source, you're welcome. I'm sorry, I can't answer that. I've been teaching yoga 25 years and work with dietitians, And I'm probably actually um, knowledgeable, partly because I'm 25 um, years teaching yoga and watching people get better who do wean off animal products, but more importantly, because I never eaten the meat, fish, or chicken, and I do my blood work since I went vegan, and I'm a living example. Not only can you be healthy, you'll be healthier, I would say. I'm, I know for sure, healthier, not clogging the arteries. You only get arteries clogged from cholesterol that's in the animal products, dairy and animal products, dead animal and dairy. That's where the cholesterol comes from on the externally. You're not getting cholesterol extra for your heart and clogging your arteries leading to heart disease if you are not um, eating. I mean, you're not getting it if you stop eating the animals, right? Doesn't mean you're perfectly healthy. There's other issues can happen as a vegan or vegetarian. You're still human. You gotta take care of the health. Eat healthy, right? Plant-based vegetables, fruits, get your protein. There's many ways to do it. Um, so let, I hope that was good information. I'm gonna stop there and end with a few minute mindful eating meditation. I didn't mention it, but some of us are here for weight loss or emotional eating, stress eating, whether plant-based or not. So this can help us, I hope, with all of it. And I I'm struggle the way everyone does too um, with refining my diet, stop being addicted to you know, eating when I'm not hungry or even extra foods, more food than I need. I have the same patterns as everyone, although I have zero craving for animals. For, I see it as what it is, which is a living being like me or my friends. I wouldn't want to kill and eat them. So for me, I have no craving to eat the animals. But for those that are shifting, you can substitute with healthy, ve healthier vegan or plant-based meats. And there's so many now as the cravings wean off. Um, so let's close our eyes. Let's try a mindful reflection meditation on why or you want to, why we eat the way we do, or maybe some goals we have to refine it. Okay, so we've got to accept ourselves as we are, but we can also always improve. And that usually includes our diet. For most of us, have some room to grow. So let's close the eyes. Take a few slow, deep breaths in and out through the nose. You can sit cross-legged on the floor or in a chair. I teach chair yoga and office yoga, and you can do it right at your desk. Just close your eyes. You can hear me, but turn away from the screen. And just take a few more slow breaths, get comfortable in your body. See what's going on in your body now. And you're welcome for this guided mindful eating meditation to place one hand on the stomach and heart or just one on the stomach or just thumb to first finger, hands on lap, your choice or fingers interlock. And just first check in with your body. How are you feeling right now? Are you hungry? Are you full? How's your energy level? 
we're from all over the world on here. Some of you um, are on here from Portugal and LA and America and all over. So we're different time zones. So depending if you ate or not, check in with your energy level. Check in if there's any pain or discomfort in the body, in the muscles or joints. Does it feel easeful? Eating plant-based, vegetarian or vegan can lower inflammation and help also joint and muscle pain. But just check where you're at. And then lastly, check in with what you ate before your last meditation, either the night before or morning. Because I didn't bring it up yet, but the yogis were also vegetarian to have a more peaceful mind, not have dead animals and not have the karma of killing animals and not to feel dull and the heavy weight it takes for digestion to process dead animals versus light, plant-based, healthy foods. So notice, I want you to check in how it affects your meditation or your mind, sluggishness, your energy level, from days you eat healthy and plant-based to days you eat more processed sugars or animal products. So we're just mindfully reflecting on what we're already eating and then check in with yourself. Do you have goals for eating a certain way and what's the obstacles? Is it weekends you eat junk or you're, maybe you're eating perfectly, but just check in. How are you doing with what you want to eat, your optimal diet to what you are eating? Just bring any goals to your consciousness and it's okay if we failed, quote unquote, 10 million times on our diet. Every meal is a new choice to try again. We never want to give up. It's never too late to create healthier organs. And I've watched people go vegan or vegetarian in their 80s or 90s and thrive and reverse some health conditions. So it's never too late. But check in. What's your goals? What's your obstacles? I'm going to have us end with some affirmations. So if you want to keep your eyes closed, hands can be on the heart or stomach or just fingers crossed. I'm going to end with some healthy body affirmations. And this can also be for body image issues or emotional stress eating issues or judging our body. It's called Affirmations for Loving the Body from Louise Hay. So you can close your eyes, repeat with me silently or out loud. I love my body. I'm going to take a deep breath after each affirmation. My body loves to be healthy. Affirming, as you close your eyes out loud or silent, affirm it to yourself. My body loves to be healthy. Visualize a healthy body. My heart is a center of love. You can bring your awareness to the heart there. My heart is the center of love. Knowing that if you stop eating animals and dairy products, you're not putting extra cholesterol to clog your arteries. So a very helpful thing you can do for your heart health as especially I learned um, teaching for the heart disease program is to shift your diet plant-based vegan my blood has life and vitality we'll do a few more affirmations if you're resonating to join in every cell in my body is loved all of my organs work perfectly perfectly sorry all of my organs work perfectly with eyes closed affirm to yourself I see with love. I hear with compassion. I move easily and comfortably, affirming the fluidity in our body. And yoga postures can help with that. I'm actually, for the first time, going to teach yoga asana, the postures on your yoga mat um, this week. You can check 12 p.m., I think Tuesday, Wednesday, so you can join me on that. That helps your joints move easily. My feet dance through life, you can affirm. I bless my food with love. You can do that before you eat. I love this one. Water is my favorite beverage. Reprogram your self-conscious if you're drinking sodas or sugary drinks. Affirm every day. My water is my favorite beverage. I know how to take care of myself. Okay, two more. I am healthier than I have ever been. Even if this is not true, we're affirming to create positive healing in our subconscious and conscious so we can shift our habits. And the last one, I appreciate my glorious body. Okay, now let's place one hand on the heart area, one over it, close your eyes, honor your body, this temple for our mind and spirit so we can do all we want in life and enjoy our life as best we can. We don't wanna 
deplete our body and our health and we want to give ourselves more time i would imagine on earth to either help the animals and the earth and humanity or just to enjoy your family and loved ones and we can be of service with greater ease if we're healthier and not limited by pain and um, managing disease so we want to do our best to take care of the body temple so we'll end with a namaste my soul honors your soul namaste you can say it together if you're in a meditation and enjoying feel free to stay there <laughs>